Well, hi there. This is a box of sand. But don't you fret. Hiding somewhere in this box of sand is one of the freakiest and most wonderful creatures on the planet. A six-eyed sand spider just waiting to burst out and envenomate unsuspecting prey with some of the scariest venom possessed by any spider. I mean, it's pretty scary. There aren't that many confirmed bites from these guys, but of the two cases of bites in Africa, well, only one of them lost an arm. They're just the closest relatives of the brown recluse spiders. There are worse things than losing an arm. Am I right, fellas? Sounds like the other fella died. So, uh, they just couldn't stop his bleeding. And unlike wandering spiders, there is no anti-venom for the bite of a six-eyed sand spider. So yeah, uh, this all just begs the question, is the six-eyed sand spider, was it a good pet? And is the six-eyed sand spider the best pet arachnid for you? Which means that we're gonna have to give the six-eyed sand spider a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. <clears throat> handleability. <sighs> handleability. Mm, I wouldn't. That's not to say that you can't. I mean, I've, I've never been bitten by a spider when I was awake. Spiders don't tend to bite unless you pin one and give it no other options for escape. We gave Black Widows a score of one out of five, but I would way rather handle a Black Widow than this because not all venom is created equal. Most people with Black Widow bites don't even require medical intervention. If you do get treatment, it will mostly just be to relieve the pain. You will have cramps, spasms, and muscle pains. Hmm. Then you'll probably be fine. With this one, uh, looks like your best case scenario might be that they just have to amputate an arm. Worst case, even with medical assistance, they can't get your profuse bleeding under control and you bleed out internally and externally. The spider is also incredibly fast. So uh, let's go with zero. Zero for handleability. Can you do it? Yeah. Should you do it? Uh, no. And even if it wasn't for the massive amount of danger that the spider poses to you, this is not a large spider. You could easily kill or injure it without really trying. And it could get away from you, get loose in your house and uh, in your marriage. Have you ever had to explain to your significant other that you were handling a spider for no good reason and it got away? So, uh, could be anywhere. And uh, if bitten, it will cause necrosis, perhaps uncontrollable bleeding, organ damage, and quite possibly death. Have you ever, have you ever had that conversation? So, so zero. Zero is good. Zero is the right amount of handling. Mom and dad's lives could be in jeopardy, or worse, their marriage. When it comes to care, we give the six-eyed sand spider a score of four out of five. I, I almost said five. Care doesn't get much easier, but you do need to get into that enclosure from time to time. And the enclosure could fall and get broken somehow, and uh, you know, then you might die. So five seems a bit too high, but the care of these spiders is exceedingly easy so long as nothing goes morbidly wrong. They live in sand, so they don't need to climb slick surfaces, and um, they can't. So make sure the box is too tall for the spider to reach the top from the substrate, and you're good. Assuming that the box has slick surfaces. Tarantula Cribs sells uh, the nicest smooth-sided boxes that I've ever seen. All of my spiders are in them, though there are other good options. We'll have links to a few of them down in the description. So, you need a box. Y you need some sand. Uh, they aren't called sand spiders for nothing. Maybe put a tiny piece of cork or something else on the sand and uh, done. No heat, no special lights, no water bowl. Box, sand, maybe some bark. Done. And all that is left after that is food. I hope you have a good bulk supplier of insect feeders. We have a whole video that can introduce you to some really good options because you're gonna need to feed this spider a single small insect every two to three weeks. That can be upwards of two insects a month. These guys, 
They make rose-haired tarantulas seem excessively complicated. Honestly, the biggest mistake that people make with these spiders is that they feed them too often. And that's understandable. Feeding time is wild, and it's the only activity that you will ever see from this spider. They can literally sit under the sand waiting for food for weeks. And so the rest of the time, it's just a box of sand that might end your marriage. Now, obviously, when you have a spider this dangerous, you want to put it in a very secure enclosure, which is why we've gone with tarantula cribs. I, I actually keep basically all of the arthropods here in the reptile room in tarantula cribs enclosures. They're just they're so well made. I've seen a lot of enclosures of this basic style, but just the acrylic is so nice. I've had others where they split at the joints. It's crystal, crystal clear. The ventilation is good. They've got a beautiful viewing side to them. I, I love these tarantula crib enclosures, which is why we've got them everywhere. I just wish that they had something like this for reptiles. And now they do. Check this out. This is one of actually quite a few brand new enclosures that Tarantula Cribs has come out with. And this obviously would be amazing for Tarantula, but this would be a very, very good enclosure for many reptiles and amphibians as well. And that is the direction that they're heading. And this isn't, like I said, this isn't the only one they've got, but it's got a screen lid, something I haven't seen from them before. I love it. You could possibly do heat lamps, at least even more ventilation. This lid still comes off. It's held on with strong magnets, just like all of their other enclosures. It's got a sliding front entry door, also held with magnets. It is beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful enclosure, and this is a really cool alternative to some of the other reptile and amphibian enclosures that you see today from a company that you know is excellent and makes wonderful, wonderful products. And so I'm really grateful that they've sponsored today's video because it is so exciting to get to show this off. You guys are some of the first people to find out about these new Tarantula Cribs enclosures built for reptiles and amphibians. So go to tarantulacribs.com. When you check out, put in Clint 10, save 10% on these rad new reptile enclosures or any of their amazing arthropod enclosures. They're just the best. When it comes to hardiness, and let, let me put it to you this way. These spiders can live up to a year, which isn't that short of a lifespan for a true spider. And if you're wondering what a true spider is, you should totally watch that video next. But a year is not a long life for a pet, unless you realize that I am telling you how long it can survive without food or water. Some species can live well over a decade, maybe up to about 15 years, assuming that you feed them from time to time, but not too often. These guys sit motionless in the sand with just their little legs poking out. They don't really drink water. They just wait for weeks at a time for a meal to come by. They are probably the hardiest animal I have ever reviewed since, you know, we haven't done a video on tardigrades just yet. So five, and only because this is a five point scale. I have never been so tempted to give extra credit in a category before. You could kill one, it could kill you. But if you leave it in the box of sand and think of it at least a few times a year, it's, it's probably gonna make it. When it comes to availability, we give the six-eyed sand spider a score of two out of five. It is possible to find them at pet shops and expos, but that isn't gonna happen very often. And it's probably illegal to get them in many places. That said, they are available online, at least field collected, from somewhat reputable sources. And they are hardy enough that they will probably do well even if field collected. Though that wouldn't be where I would recommend getting one. They're occasionally available at captive bred, and that is definitely the most ethical and sustainable way to get one. The fact is that if you want a six-eyed sand spider, you can probably get one. But it won't be as easy as just walking down to your local pet shop. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the six-eyed sand spider a score of four out of five. The main expense is, well, just the spider itself. It is one of the most expensive true spiders that you can get. That said, it's also one of the longest lived true spiders that you can get, and one of the easiest to keep. After the spider, all you really need is a box. A box, even a very nice box, like these from Tarantula Cribs, you know, they're not gonna cost too much. You'll need some sand, and if you get a punch card for a couple of dozen insect feeders, you should be set for the next year. 
Even if you want to prepay for insect feeders for the next 15 years, that's probably only going to cost you about 30 bucks. Altogether, it will cost less than $200. That might even include a lifetime supply of feeders. Not the cheapest imaginable, but pretty close. As long as it doesn't cost you an arm or a leg. Or worse. And that is why, overall, we give the Six-Eyed Sand Spider a score of 3.0 out of 5. If what you want is a rad, engaging true spider that is notoriously dangerous, easy to care for, not as scary as people think, and you can observe regularly, get a Black Widow. But if it has to be the easiest pet ever, and possibly the most deadly of all spiders, and you don't mind that you will only see it every few weeks, and you have one more arm than you really need, and you don't mind the possibility of an agonizing and gruesome death, then the six-eyed sand spider might be the perfect pet arachnid for you. But I'd get a hogna instead. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I want to pause to talk for just a moment about our not-so-recent-anymore trip to South America, where we documented some amazing things, including that terrifying Brazilian wandering spider. We love doing that kind of thing, and one of the things that we noticed is that you guys really like arthropod content. And before, we didn't have the equipment required to really show you as many arthropods as we could have. Now that we know that how much you guys like seeing these kinds of creatures in crazy exotic places, we would like to go to a lot of these places and show you crazy, amazing arthropods. And so if that's something that you would like to see more of from our channel, we do need financial support to do these kinds of trips. So if you'd be interested in supporting us on Patreon, that goes a long, long way towards allowing us to make more content like we did in South America. And where do you think we should go next?